I'm ready to feel the rain wash over me. I'm ready. Oh, that's nice. That's nice because usually when I sing, people tell me they can't recognize the songs I sing because I'm a terrible singer. I recognize the songs you sing. I am ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to let the rain wash over me. me. I am ready. Okay. I am ready. That's my Michael Jackson. You've been hit by, you've been by smooth women. So when you do that, you're like a better singer than when you're a real singer. So maybe. <laughs> Insults. Insults. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have a very, very, very interesting topic to discuss. And it's because some of you in the comments have been telling us to talk about it. And we're going to talk about sex, baby. And let's talk about you and me. And all the good things and all the bad things. And all, and all the bad things that life may... Just that may be. Okay. Let's talk about... Let's talk about it. Let's okay. talk about interracial relationships, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's your boy, GNL Zamba. Miriam and, Tamar. And together we are... We're in Simbi. Hmm, where do we start? I don't even know. Um... Um, so first of all, yeah, I'm your first. Did you clap? Oh, crap. Clap three times again and click your heels. Click, click, click. So, okay. Uh -huh. Um, I was gonna say first of all. Well, I'm not your first interracial. Well, I'm the first white person you've been with, but you've dated some Asian. Okay. Asian yeah but that was when you were like a kid like not really not yeah, like not, in, not like not adult like dating. where you're thinking about anything like identity wouldn't be an issue at that point yeah so well it was so first of all let's both think about yeah. how we started dating people from other from, from other races ethnicities well, we, for me, it began and, with and this, I and for me it began with the song "Sweetest Taboo." Mm. I wanted all the things that were taboo. Okay, I'm playing. So you were told that it was taboo <laughs> to date outside. Yeah, and and I wanted the sweetest your tribe. Taboo. Okay. Yeah, basically, do you know? Do you know? Do you know? You, before we even dive into the topic, um, this would be a cool thing for us to do. Mm -hmm. You could put together a playlist of songs. About. That are basically about <laughs> interracial couples. Maybe we'll do that as a uh, as an exercise. No, as a whatever. She's promising to what put this playlist in there. A pairing with this episode. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, we'll we work should. on we it. We should because I, I was just thinking about "Sweetest Taboo" uh, and that other song by Alicia Keys. Have you seen the video for "Unthinkable"? If you haven't seen it, go see the video for "Unthinkable." Okay, so this the video makes time. it that yes, way, but yes. I don't think the song. You know how you can a video can add an additional meaning. Yeah. So I don't know that the song itself has that meaning. I mean, I, we, you know, what? that's the meaning it derived for me. Okay, but she wanted but to bang the white Once guy. you had the video, because I don't think about it when I'm listening to the song. Oh, but that's the thing, uh, uh, and we've talked about this before. The way that we both experienced listening to music, you usually go to the artist's album. Yeah. And you listen to the song. And you watch videos. While I go to the artist's page and watch videos. Okay. That's how. Okay. Yeah, so um, today we're talking about like interracial relationships. Now I'm just like thinking about more songs that are about that. Are, but, okay, <laughs> what they, we have to do that it's on going our to be own an, time. No, 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 no. It's going to be an, uh, an ongoing exercise. Yeah, maybe Proba we'll make a playlist probably, and then talk about probably it. Probably the people who are watching this and listening to it, we're going to turn it into a fun game. Suggest some songs for us that you think would be very good for uh, interracial, interracial couples. Or where, or where the, theme, the theme has been... Uh, interracial people falling in love or like talking about stuff. Mm -hmm. There's another very good one, which is um, um, I, I think I, th I showed you. This was one of my favorite videos back in the day. There's a band called Freshly Ground. Mm -hmm. It's from South Africa. Yeah. And the song is called Pot Belly. But it, what about the front lines? Seven lines, pot belly still give good loving. That one? Even, even though I have fat thighs, thighs flabby arms, arms. But Bella still gives good loving. But so in the video, it's a white guy and her. It's a white guy and well, their one, band one, one is of the house. One mixed, of the houses, right? yeah, one of the houses is green, and the other house is red. Mm -hmm. So the guy lives in this um, red house, 
and he falls in love with the black girl living in the mm. greenhouse. Okay. And this whole entire time they're trying to connect, but it's like kind of awkward. Both of them are afraid of yeah. each other. And I don't know, she made him a sweater and he made us something. Oh, that's nice. And they took they the present gifts. and they realized that that did not fit in their They're world. Like, oh. So they accepted the so present, took it home. But it, the green stood out so much in the red house. That it didn't fit his whole um, mm. his whole life basically. It, it it disturbed his whole being, and I don't know what present he gave her, but even for her, it did not suit how she colored her her apartment. I get it. So I see. in the video, they they are apart, and then they walk towards each other, hand each other back the presents, and. Without giving so much of the video away, you know how the video ends. They both end up merging these two worlds. Okay. Um, I was going to say, I was like, that's a, I was like, so I was going to say, oh, he didn't want that pot belly, even though it gives good loving, but he did want he, it. He did want okay. the pot belly, turns out. But okay, the, good. What the, the metaphor I'm trying to drive through here, not the metaphor actually, the story here is I think interracial relationships are like that for some people. Mm -hmm. And relationships at large are like that. Yeah, well, I like the idea um, of saying w one's world is a certain color. Yes. But then together you make a, a, a world mixed of colors. Yes. And, and the world is really mixed, but unfortunately people tend to stay mostly into their own yeah, color. Yeah, yeah. No, and, 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 and also the, the, the bigger lesson here is that it often takes time for these two colors to ever blend. Mm. It often takes time. Um, it takes love. It takes appreciation. It takes courage of going out of your heart to take the present to the other person. Mm -hmm. And it takes courage for the other person to also reach out and accept that present. And to also have an honest conversation when it's not working. To say it's not fitting into my world. And then you find solutions and see how the blend of the colors even makes it better. I know we're talking abstract right now. Um, but it's a very... It was a very interesting video. Go check out that video. Yeah, I'm going to. I, 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 I don't think I've seen it. I hope it's still it, on YouTube. So. It's called um, Pot Belly Pot by Belly. Freshly Ground. Uh -huh, yeah. uh -huh. But now, talking about how Solomon fell in love with the Queen of Sheba, mm -hmm. which is how I think about the very first interracial relationship. Right? Isn't it? I would. I think before there was probably some, but that's the most famous like one on what? record. Like what? I don't know. Well, there's another story about angels that fell from heaven, uh, mixing with the mixing with the sons of man. You've heard about that? Mm -mm. So, legend would have it, or the Bible. Would like have I literally it. have no idea what you're talking about. I don't even know what it's, the context is. This is this is a story from where? This is a story from. It's a Bible story. And, okay. and I think <laughs> it's real. If, if I'm wrong, I beg to be corrected. I, I, I beg to be corrected. I beg to be corrected. Um, but there's a story where there were angels that that fell in love with uh, the children of men, and they began having okay. sex with them. And the people in heaven were pissed. So this is like interspecial almost. This is intergalactic. Intergalactic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This is intergalactic. Okay. It's like it's beyond this normal yeah. shit. Yeah. It's another dimension. Okay. Basically, it's another realm. Yeah. Altogether. So what happened? Intergalactic banging. So, uh -huh. so the people in heaven were not happy that these people were mixing. But I think the the damage or the blessing had already happened, and there was no way of stopping it. And those angels were told to stay on earth, and that's how I ended up here. Is that punishment for an angel to stay on Earth? I heard it. I, I'm glad. Good for you. Um, is it punishment for an angel to stay on Earth? Or but, well, we assume heaven is better. Yeah. So I'm trying to see, like, according to this story, would the Bible be promoting intergalactic no, and no, no. interracial it, it relationships? Or... In that case, it forbids it because they were punished and told to to be on Earth. Well, that's well, why I'm saying, is it so? Okay. So it's a punishment in the in the in the in the context of the Bible because even for Satan to fall from grace, he had to be banished from heaven to come on earth. If you say so, so, being on earth okay. is, and, and uh, that's the Bible context. Right. That's what I'm and saying. And now in Greek mythology, you have there's actually now I'm seeing there's a theme of people from 
heaven wanting to mix with with mortals so well, do you know, didn't you know the, the gods story have of medusa sex with humans all the time i thought that's the, so this yeah. is th- th- this is where it's first recorded one of the um gods who was like very very fond of mixing with the with the local women was zeus mm-hmm. so zeus was <laughs> Ze- to be honest, Zeus sounds kind Zeus of rapey. Creepy, right? He's yeah, rapey, right? Very He's rapey. Re- rapey and creepy. So, so apparently, um, Medusa gets the curse because the, the other chick in heaven was not having it. Zeus coming through and being with this with this chick, so he cast her to not be beautiful, but instead to have snakes on her head. Mm. So, anyways, the idea is that yeah. people get punished for having these for having interracial inter, interracial inter whatever mixed relationships that's between. what brings us here to discuss <laughs> this because if i were to take a deep di- a deep dive into this story you might find that whoever wrote this greek mythological shit was also looking at ethiopian hair and calling it cast and making up all these stupid stories we don't know dreadlocks baby i'm <laughs> representing today we're present it's your boy gnl zamba and Miriam Tamar. And together we are? Together we're in Simbi. So we're in Simbi, and Simbi is this cross culture duo um, based in East Africa and Los Angeles. And we are also a couple. Yeah. Um, a couple that's a duo uh, more like Sony and Sha, but mm-hmm. with a better ending. Um, <laughs> and our, our lives inform our art, of course. Yes, definitely. And. And our view of the world. And our view of the world. Yes. Now, it so happens that every time uh, we are either having conversations with people in certain cities. In LA, it's not that. In LA, in, an interracial couple no longer turns heads. Mm-hmm. But there is a debate somewhere, which we're also going to get to. Yeah. You know, um, I was going to say. But let, me first, yeah, let me first finish my point. Let me introduce there it. Are let me introduce places my in point. LA. Yeah, let me introduce okay. my point. Let me introduce my point. <laughs> So we realize that it's we start conversations, but it's no longer just about um we're going to take a deep dive in that. Mm. But we realize that whenever people see a black man with a white woman, or a white woman with a black man, no matter which whichever angle you're looking at it, there's a certain way they look at it. And um it sparks conversations. Some of them are it's, harsh. It sparks some are conver- sweet. It, it 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 sparks assumptions. Assumptions, that's one. Yeah. Um, and some are sweet, some are bitter, and some people just want to see how beautiful the kids would look. Which some people find offensive when Which people, some people say that. Find it offensive doesn't offend me, but well. a lot of people... It doesn't offend me as well. Because like, um, I'm like, yeah, I mean, I can't wait to see what our kids look like, and I think mixed kids are gorgeous, and yeah, but... I thought but you some... told me you didn't want babies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Um, <laughs> We find that even in Facebook comments, whenever we share Facebook comments, uh, everybody, uh, basically, Facebook is a cesspool of opinion. Yes. So everybody brings their world and their preconceived notions and puts it into a line, which mm-hmm. often comes off, um, like... which often comes off as rude. Maybe the intention might not even be to be rude, but that's how that person understands mm-hmm. that world, or everything. Um, that they have judged about the other people is now this person's responsibility. So I, t- in, I found that in my world, I take on the responsibility of every white person who has ever stepped in Africa and all the mistakes they have ever made. I'm not getting you exactly. So um, so uh, recently, um, I posted a picture and it's uh-huh. a picture of, um, I think it was you carrying a basket uh-huh. And this is part of our music video, which is yeah. basically about hope and, um, and making takes sure place in a it's about humanity at the market and, and we are in yeah. a market and uh, we do a very good job not to put off this whole white savior thing because we are very careful not to do that. But we hope that our music connects with people on a human level and the more metropolitan and the more mixed we become, I think communities are better uh, when we are all like we can have conversations and have laughter and share mm-hmm. each other's experiences so this person comments and says um i like your music a lot please tell her to tell her people that we are people too do you get what mm-hmm. i'm saying mm-hmm. so it's as it's 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 like she loves the music she loves what you bring to the table but 
there is something that you represent that you should take on the responsibility of telling everybody that's white that the people in Africa are people too, or the people in Uganda are people too. Okay, I see you're feeling like that's a criticism or like a uh, something that's too big but I, at the same time i do think that with our mm. art we're trying to say that not just we're not trying to say the people of africa or the people of ugandan are human we're trying yeah. to say everyone is human and we all have similar needs and desires yeah and- yeah, yeah. Uh, besides from the art besides from the art like um so, so do you think i'm creating a dinosaur out of uh a femur yeah i thought you were gonna talk more about like the the standard comments which are either uh sugar mama comments or um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean oh, what are the standard oh, 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 we're getting there we're okay getting but there. let's go I'm, do the I'm cooking. I'm cooking right now okay. i'm cooking we're getting there so the context of where that comes from from how i understand it from my perspective is um this person has probably been discriminated against mm-hmm right and she sees that you're one of the good ones oh okay i see how you're saying that. you get okay, she yeah. sees that you're one of the good ones that embraces the culture um is married to a black person um basically you've been part of the people and you're you're ugandan you're part of the of, of, mm-hmm. you're part of the you're part of the fold mm-hmm. but they they are all they also have at the back of their mind that where you come from not all the people love africans and love the community the way you do yeah that's true so that's how i dissect that statement yeah so that means that you take on the responsibility of a whole entire race or how people look while on the other side also for africans when i come from uganda and i live in la Mm -hmm. i'm expected to be the best representation of uganda of, of africa every, of every ugandan every african that has ever lived yeah. um people people talk to me and they say you're from uganda i've been to ghana mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> like I, like uh, those are for, again for ghana. people who don't yeah. know because again, a lot people, of people don't yeah, know they they're don't know. opposite sides of the continent and yes. are what an eight hour nine hour flight like yes. just to give some perspective yes. of the distance yeah and, it, and and often often i'm careful not to put people in no the, you, you in a racist whatever because that's just a question um that anyone would um probably you're mistaken you don't know where they are right and you're trying to you're, you're actually trying to, trying you're to, trying to relate and engage yeah. and so i don't okay. want to, yeah but i'm, I wanna, I'm very, yeah i'm very careful um not to put people in that category I want to also but, make sure we're yeah. talking about or the relationship rather than just um, being white or black somewhere else. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Um, the point I was trying to make is that um, when a person mistakes Ghana, Ghana with Uganda, mm-hmm. I'm not mad at that because I also don't know um, what part of India Delhi is. Yeah. And where Bombay is yeah, probably yeah. it was rebranded, yeah. and I don't know what the history is. So I, I usually take. Granted, uh, that is a country. It's it's the same country versus, versus the continent. continent. I mean, like that's I've a little to, bit. Not like I come from India. Yeah, I've been to Beijing too. Yeah, you know I mean? like it's. it's <laughs> I've so, been into Asia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm careful not to be uh, mad or to be. Um, insulted or well, to be yeah um, i would say because, that's because not I, I usually look at those as like teachable moments yeah but i also right because the, so the intention to, yeah i think the intention is good and there's moments where you can be approached where the intention is good and there's moments where you can tell it's bad intentions or negative energy so mm-hmm, obviously mm-hmm. the reaction is different yeah so i think yeah that's more i i think i'd love to sort of talk about the those differences where people seem to be excited about it versus people who have issues with it and sort of the experience in the US versus Uganda moving around as a couple. Yeah, and I'll also tell you um, my experience and how some of the things make me feel. Okay. Um, <laughs> so We're going to be sharing a lot of feelings today. Personal feelings. Uh, this and, is only our experience. And, That's and, the thing and, too. And how, do, how does that make you feel? <sighs> Sometimes. No, I'm very serious. Disappointed. <laughs> 
I'm serious. I'm serious. No, so, how do this this conversation makes me feel excited because I think it's a good conversation to have um, yeah. sharing our experiences. So what I usually find, um, so we've dissected that 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 comment, and um, we are both representatives of whether we like it or not. We are representatives of our people mm -hmm. and where we come from, mm -hmm. the background, and with that, with that also comes responsibility. The responsibility not to all to not to just get offended at every slight mistake another person makes, but also the responsibility to correct or educate. And unless someone says something really no, if it's stupid, up. it's stupid. If it's ignorant, it's ignorant. Ignorance is going to be answered by more ignorance. But hopefully, yeah. cooler heads prevail, and some people see reason or an opportunity to teach. Mm -hmm. So depending on. Um, on what so mode. let's say let's yeah. talk about like how your family has felt how my family has felt how our yeah. how our friends have felt like different reactions we've we've had or that have stood out well i remember i remember when we met um at the very very, very first day we met we were in a circle of about 12 12 people yeah i don't know right yeah, yeah. sure and among those 12 people, um, it was my team, and we had just come from a tour. We had been touring the country, and we were just taking a break, just like in a bar, and we're just going to drink a beer and then head home, mm -hmm. have a conversation, but then other people began powering in. And the very first person who recognized who you were, I think after we had been talking, was a person who was working for me. And he seemed to have a problem that he was seeing this was going to go much further. This is Although the first time was, you're telling me this, It's the first time I'm way. telling you this, yes. Are you going to tell me time. who it is now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll Are you going to tell... You. I, 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 hate, just, okay. I hate putting people's names out there. I'm dying to know. Like, can you <laughs> whisper to me now? And it's like probably the worst yeah, 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 behavior. Yeah. But but oh. you, you don't even like this person, actually. Well, clearly I, your, not. Your, your, instincts, your instincts were were, were spot on. Oh, God. Because, so move um, on. Yeah, so this person didn't like that we no, were, were talking. It, it's strange. It's strange how energies work because even even though you were being friendly to him, I think after like a few days, his energy was completely off and you also like completely just turned the other way and you never like really saw eye to eye. Not like you were going against him and he was going mm -hmm, against you, mm -hmm. but he seemed to always like have comments to say about, about you. Well... And you guys did a good job covering it because usually I sense that stuff and I have no idea. No, what you're no about. I'm 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 very good at, at taking time with things and thinking about them. Um, I so for uh, to go to go okay. back to that story. So this yeah. was the very very first reaction um, of a person reacting and seeing, um, and this was just hours of us meeting, and he was already saying um, kind of negative things about. You know, that was a little premature, wasn't it? It was really, really premature. But I now in hindsight, I look back at it and I was like, I think he was really worried about his position because he was like my employee and he knows when I get into serious relationships. Um, gone with the bullshit. I'm going to be staying home. I'm not going to be going to the bar. Mm. I don't want to go promote m stupid music and hang with stupid people. I'm not going to be paying... For your bills, I'm not going to be paying for mm. da 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 da. But I'm then just that wouldn't be necessarily chilling. be that I was white because that would, you're saying that's for anyone. Yeah, yeah. But the comments that he made were basically trying to discourage me from talking to you because you were white. Mm. You get me? But because I was having such a good time, it was it was all bullshit to me. Mm -hmm. I I completely like ignored ignored him, and I think we had a conversation until for hours. That was the yeah, very very yeah. first day. So in my lifetime, I've come to encounter those moments from people that I know, um, people that I like, mm -hmm. even people that I don't like when they're throwing jabs. That's what, that's the first thing they say. Yeah. They have to comment about your wife's color. And now, now it's no longer even about whether you're intelligent, whether you're hardworking, whether you made yourself like the top, one of the top brands in East Africa. Now everything you do has to be attributed to you have a white wife. And I always find that... Meaning it's, uh, what? That you you 
everything you achieve is because of me or meaning yeah, what yeah, you yeah, said yeah, yeah. At, at least that's what's that's what's implied uh-huh. and it's implied because i know exactly where it's coming from so to so spell that out for people where is it coming from like so where it's coming from straight, where, yeah. where where that comes from from of um of not giving a black man credit for the things that he has worked for or his intelligence comes from colonialism and the and the training that most Africans are still enslaved with you'll find that from childhood um, very few very few children can mention a black inventor or anything that mm. any black man has ever invented mm-hmm. even though even though you point out all the th- special things that Africans and black people have invented uh, from medicine uh, to engineering, mathematics, art, storytelling. Even if you tell them that the traffic lights that everybody uses in the world were invented by black people, they will still give the credit to the white man. You get me? So mm-hmm. I usually look at, the, usually when, it's, when somebody attributes uh, all of my efforts, my brilliance and, you know, like confidence or uh, any sort of achievement to because he has a white wife, it's either coming from not giving a black man credit ever mm-hmm. and i don't blame it on them usually because it takes it's it takes time to break, to break the chains yeah. of of uh, being mentally enslaved mm-hmm. so f- i find that for most of my community that's how they look at it and um it also falls in the category of what we were discussing some time back of i hated being put in the category of oh he's He's a Rasta. And yeah, Rastas yeah. are with white sugar mamas. Yeah. Because I had worked my ass off to build a company, a record label that was really successful in Uganda. Um, and I remember one time uh, we were at the back and we were chilling uh, at the back of this restaurant. And we were like really, really cozy at the back where our friends were. But when we came to, to go out and go into our car, I told you I didn't want to hold hands. Mm-hmm. Because it was coming yeah, from Yeah, that. that actually used to you be... You remember in that, the, In the first, like, yeah. six months or year of our relationship, actually, yeah, yeah that was a thing. We, we weren't allowed to hold hands in public, and we'd get in fights about it. I'd, it would, like, really hurt my feelings, and you, you would just keep it telling me... It wasn't that we weren't allowed. I told you I didn't want to. Yes, yeah. he'd, you didn't want to because you that would send the message that I was in control or I was your sugar mama, right? Yeah, That's yeah, the, yeah. 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 Like I, I I really don't like that. <laughs> I, I I didn't like that at all. And because um there were people always in my ear um talking about, oh, now you're dating a white girl. Mm-hmm. And because i b- before before we met I was I was single. So there were few people that I was seeing around town. Not slightly, but like there were few. And their comments as well because the phone calls were not being returned and mm-hmm. you know like i'm in a relationship now yeah so whenever they phoned me that was the comment or whenever they phoned anybody from my team to deliver a message the message was it was it was harsh mm-hmm. you get me and so there is that angle where it's it's just um a couple um which is not just like any other couple, it's a celebrity couple. And it's in the people's eyes. It's the full view of the eyes. And we are both in the music industry, so we're not going to avoid going out. Mm-hmm. But the image of what's being put out and how the how the people perceive us, I think from the very, very beginning, was kind of um, something that I had to decide for myself, whether the happiness of my relationship was more important to me than what people's opinions yeah. were. Yeah, I mean, I remember yeah. there was constant press about us and no one, uh, I never had a name, I was Muzungu, white woman. <laughs> Yo, the press in Kampala never wanted to call my wife by her name. Here's they my just question. Just, the white woman. Would that be the, the case? Muzungu. If I was Ugandan, would they have found out my name and started posting it? Or yeah, was yeah, it, definitely. I def- definitely. And I also felt because I was in the industry, Yeah, it was like, you, like you people, know who I am and you're not going to write my name. It, it felt very intentional. It's, it's, it's disrespectful. Like it, they do it intentionally sometimes. Yeah. Like either just call you the white woman because they don't want you to have a name. And mm-hmm. because they just want you to be any other 
any other white woman they have seen in town. Right, right. They, they don't want to give you a name because by giving you a name. <laughs> what, what do they do to people? Um, what, what did the slave masters do to the slaves when they first arrived off the coast yeah, of Africa? Took their names. They, 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 deny you, they deny you your proper name. Right. The, the same way in the Holocaust or, yeah. or, or different internment camps, you, you become a number. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. Just in, the, in the Holocaust it's, it's, camps, it's a way they, they, to they, dehumanize. They, they jump, it's a way to dehumanize somebody. Yeah, it's a way to disrespect somebody and not recognize them and give them their proper respect. You deny them the name. Mm -hmm. You give them a number. You give them a title. You give them a nickname, a nick but you don't. Yeah. You mm -hmm. never call them or address them um, by their real name. Mm -hmm. uh, on the last podcast, this looked like what this looked like. I was pouring. Yeah, I was alcohol, like, you look like you're me, like. This is about to be tea. Sly. These are tea bags. <laughs> These are tea bags in here. Um. Yeah, yeah, please go on. Yeah. What was I saying? So Sorry. that's what that's what was going on in my world. So what was going on in your world? Yeah, I would say I didn't experience comments so like okay, not about people would more say things which I think is more a more subtle way of like like do you think there's going to be issues in your relationship? Like do you have a lot in common? Like mm -hmm. things like assumptions that you can't have a lot in common or that there will be issues because of that. Um, my parents out of a place of love. Yeah. I mean, in the Jewish culture, people want you to marry Jewish. So that's like the thing. Africans want you to marry African. Yeah. yeah. So, but also my parents, because of their experience, they think, okay, marriage is, we're jumping ahead, but relationships are hard. Marriage is hard. So... I mean, in the beginning, they didn't think this was going to last anyways. They kept waiting for it to end because yeah, they're yeah. like, this is an insane relationship. Like, what? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. And we were moving around, moving continents, moving like just so many things kept changing. So they're yeah. like, yeah, hey, it will end. It will fizzle out. But when it got serious for them, it was like, OK, if you have so many struggles in a long term relationship or marriage, yeah. you don't want to add on to that. And to them, they say adding on to that is a different religion, a different from a different country, different race. Like uh, to uh, them, so, the no, differences no, so, so, create so, 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 challenges. Slow down, slow down, slow down. So, from their perspective, marriage is already hard enough. Yes. Right? So you don't want to add on the burden of more, more differences. Yeah, people, people make make these blanket statements that I don't really understand. Maybe we are yet to to see it, but we're already ten years deep in our relationship. But I know that and, and, and people say marriage is hard, but and I don't where is it hard? It is we do work. I mean, we get in arguments, we have to solve them. Like different people have a different Yeah, but how often do we argue? But a lot of our things, the way yeah. we see things are partially cultural, partially family by family has different ways about um what do you spend on or what do you uh, no, I'm talking about when they say marriage is hard. Well, the, what that's what I'm saying. Yeah. The different things in a marriage are about who's cleaning, who's cooking, who's doing the responsibilities, what's happening with the finances. That's trivial do you know, shit. Do you know most divorces? Isn't that and trivial? Isn't that trivial? Majority of divorces are because of fina financial related. Okay, I understand so you're that. Calling it finances is not trivial. But come on, he left the toilet seat up and you're splitting because he left the toilet seat up? You didn't like each other. <laughs> You didn't like each other. You got married for the wrong reasons. You okay. get me? Marriage is not supposed to be hard. But I'm if saying you like that those differences can also be based on how you are raised, and how you are raised is partly your culture, your background. Like different things impact that. Yeah. So I can see those in our day-to-day -day life, but most of them don't bother me. And the sometimes things do bother me, but the the pros of the interesting conversations we have. Because I think we have more interesting conversations rather than mundane conversations. So I think mm -hmm. I enjoy that. Like, that's such a benefit I, I to me. I love that a lot more than I think Whatever, any other thing. yeah. Like, yeah. let's meal plan for the week. Like, I don't know. We're not, a, like, so for <laughs> us, it, <laughs> I don't know. Um, what was that Kevin Hart joke? Hey, husband, you're back. How are you? <laughs> I don't you even know. That? No. You need to but check okay. it out. Um, but... Yeah, so I think, but also like with friends, like I remember when we started coming back to the States and you were meeting different friends, like I could see that they just behaved differently with you than with than with white people or other people. We've mm -hmm, been around mm -hmm. um, and, and had they struggling been, to make conversation. Had, had they been around black people before? No, and that's the thing too. Most people, most of my relatives, most people I'm friends with have very 
limited experience with different people of color. Like that's yeah, unfortunate. Yeah, like yeah. that's culture it, shock. Yeah. But is it, it okay? Would it would that be? We're going to come back to this. So your friends were struggling to make conversations. Remind me to come back to this marker. Yeah. But um. So, uh, my question here is: Were they struggling because? It's the first time they're experiencing somebody from a different race and continent. That's yeah. one because I've also yeah, it's observed, it's it's, a la it's layers of things, right? Yeah, I've, because I've also observed taking you around some of my relatives and some of my friends, mm -hmm. and they don't know what kind of conversation to have with you. Yeah, so they begin talking to you like you're some kind of doll, or talking to you like a child. That's the same thing with like, you. Hey, yeah. How are you? So I'm wondering. Well, you even, know, that's even, even there's even, even the, the voice. Them. You know that voice. Yeah, yeah, the, I know the voice. The voice. Yeah, yeah, I know the voice. But I'm even wondering whether for your friends that was the yeah. same experience. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because obviously, if you were African American, that's mm. a different. There's maybe more social. Con I, again, I'm sure there's la layers to that, and it's like I don't know. Maybe they think they have more in common to talk about with someone who's from the US because they can say they can think okay maybe we can talk about politics or like there's yeah. different things in common yeah. from if if like again people ha are more likely have been to Europe so maybe a European person would be easier or like but yeah. someone from, yeah. if, someone from none Africa of my is friends like have been from, from another Africa. planet basically yeah so they're yeah. like what do you, they don't even they're like what kind of music food anything like politics like it's they're like it feels like there's nothing to talk about yeah and then people get to know you and it's a totally different situation but i don't know i feel yeah. like so so people are struggling to have conversations yeah, yeah but i feel like honestly for us i think we've been in more awkward situations with people we don't know than um, people that we know like i don't feel like that that there's like many people close to us that have created really difficult dynamics or sit scenarios or situations that oh, are like no 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 yeah it's yeah it's usually people from outside who have no idea what yeah which is also interesting because those people why do you even care because you have nothing to, like you don't even <laughs> know us so where's the concern coming from um yeah um but but then uh, then with all of that I, I think we made a mistake of painting like a grim picture in the beginning um so our duo right now has about it has thousands of followers right yeah. and there are people who love the music that we do there are people who love the brand that we have mm -hmm. and in, within a very very short time we've been able to do that mm -hmm. in los angeles we have performed in some of the most prestigious spaces mm -hmm. and people love the music that we do and what we bring to the table in uganda as well you're looking at nairobi reacting very well to our music um, in Kampala as well, we, East Africa basically is giving us a very good reception. Mm -hmm. um, we have, basically what I'm trying to say is, much as there are people who see it in a different way, there are so many other people who also cheer for you and love it. Yeah. Um, but the, the conversations that I want to get to, get to um, are about how interracial relationships have nothing to do with everything outside out of their bubble yet they are put in a position to deal with everything that's out of that yeah. bubble L L let me express the point no yeah yeah okay, okay. but that made me think you first me first i because, just want to say yeah can the I, story I want to talk about is the story in kenya remember the story in kenya i don't know which one you're talking about okay okay finish your the story i'm yeah. talking about and then we, is is not a story it's a general thing of when people uh have an issue with a black man not dating a black woman or or saying That's you, ca exactly you can't or you say to. you can't yeah. be a pan-african yeah. if you date a white woman all these things that again like like you can't stand for certain things yeah. because of the relationship Wh which is again a very very big misconception um I'll, allow me elaborate a little so when we were in kenya i'm going to collect that to when we are in black hollywood circles mm -hmm. right so you find that when we were in kenya we were having beautiful interactions with our friend Kuyu. We we're having beautiful interactions with Maya, Kato, and whatever. All of these people. Yeah. And um, the conversation is 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 a great conversation, right? And at the back of our minds, we're just having a beautiful Nairobi experience. But that beautiful Nairobi experience 
comes with the responsibility of I have to be loyal with my tribe and now you have to take on the responsibility of everybody that's white and who has robbed land from the Kenyans. Yeah, all the So colonizers. we were having a very beautiful meal and before we knew it, somebody was being rude and I can't take somebody being rude towards my wife in my face. You I'm trying me? to remember what I'm, I'm coming. I'm oh, coming you remember? Totally. Okay. And without saying any names, no. um, <laughs> It happened to be somebody who had been to America, mm -hmm. and America has been one of the I think harshest, spent years in the States. Yes, yeah. America has been one of the most cruel places to humanity. In the history of humanity, America has been one of the most cruel places to black people. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Yeah. Like, y y people don't like drawing the parallels of Nazi Germany and and what the black people have been going through yeah. in this country but if if you're killing people quickly through gas chambers or whether you're cutting them piece by piece mm -hmm. for 300 yeah. 400 something what years were we, it is the same we were thing you are reading, a beast at the end of the day we were either reading people. something or we were seeing something that yeah. the Nazis came to the US to learn to about the nuts some of the nazis <laughs> thought some of the american policies were harsh too um, harsh to use because they came to, to study use. they they wanted to learn about segregation and yeah. how to set it up in germany yeah. but they're like oh no some of these are just inhumane <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 th and that was in response to the we are digressing a lot but <laughs> again it ties into the point of like interracial relationships because they the germans and what led to their to their to their terror of to, on the jews was because they they wanted racial purity. Mm -hmm. That was basically um, what do they call it? Gene not genetics. It's um. Uh, yeah. Oh gosh. There's a word. There's a word which is escaping me right now. But it's about uh, m oh. maintaining racial purity. And they had this convoluted idea of being Aryan that was like yeah. being creating a pure yeah. race. So they they did so much evil in the name of not contaminating the race or creating the pure race mm -hmm. that all of the evil that we kn we have known them to do was in the name of creating something pure. Yes. And pure meant not mixing races. Mm -hmm. The Germans breed with eugenics. Germans. Eugenics. Eugenics. Eugenics yeah, is the like, word. I'm like not. I'm and like half listening because I'm like, what is the word? What is the word? What is the word? <laughs> eugenics. So, so in this in this book where you where this lady, the book is called. Um, your dad was reading it and gave it to us. What is it called? Is that in Cast? Cast. Yes, the book is called yes. Cast. Oh, read that and, book. And <gasps> somebody go read that book. That or book on is audio. Amazing. It's like. But, but yeah. to show you how cruel uh, America was being to black people through its policies and systemic, um, the systemic racism, racism it yeah. was planting into, into the community, they had a one drop policy. Yeah. Which means if yeah, you one drop have of white blood. and you have one drop of black blood, in which you, means like how many generations back you're do you no have to go? You're no longer white. Literally, you'd you'd have to go so many generations yes, back. But, but their idea was of the purity of the white race. Yeah, that when the Germans heard about that, they go like. I think that would be too That's harsh. just too extreme. That's too extreme. Now, imagine we'll allow if you, you can have one <laughs> Jewish you, grandparent. Yes, yes. Now imagine how it has to be. For a Nazi to think you're being cruel, yeah, that's what America and white society has been doing to black people in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So I think in the middle of our innocence and laughing about um, having a beautiful Nairobi experience, this lady was carrying all of that anger and fury of having which been is in totally the States, valid. which is totally yeah. valid, which is totally valid. And it was heaped onto you mm -hmm. <laughs> because you were the white mm -hmm. person who was in the on you, you were two white people in the mm -hmm. circle, mm -hmm. but she kept on going back and forth. And I was wondering why the conversation had to be, why the conversation had to be hostile. But I understand. I totally, totally understand where that is coming from. Oh, I remember so, what so, it was that yes, she said. Hold up. But to, to, to conclude my point before I lose it. Mm hmm when you're in an interracial couple and this may maybe could explain your mother's view of marriage is already hard you don't want to add on the challenges yeah. of dealing with being in an interracial couple first of all because in that moment um it's the example that i can draw for our listeners that 
you had to bear the insults mm -hmm. even though you had nothing to do with it and your people had been persecuted as well by mm -hmm. white people mm -hmm. you had to bear the insults from and the anger and the venting from this black lady mm -hmm. in Africa because she felt like even though we were all sitting on the same table enjoying the same meal and sharing the same transportation uh, through matatus, whether cabs, whether whatever, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. even if we were living this mundane experience, you represented white people who are in Kenya or white people all over the world that have been nothing but cruel mm -hmm. to black people. You get me? So yeah. whether you want the pressure or you don't want the pressure, I'm conflicted as your husband because I have to defend you. Mm -hmm. that's my way get the fuck out of here <laughs> but then again I'm a Pan-African and when it comes to my people I understand you get me so we were stuck like deers in headlights and saying you know what it's uncalled for it doesn't have to be that true blah 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 and when the experience turned unpleasant we had to leave mm -hmm. and we decided that's not someone we want to spend and time with anymore. that's not somebody yeah. that we want to <laughs> hang out with you get me is her pain valid yes is it our responsibility to bear the the ills of everybody that came before us no but it's my responsibility but here's what to i'd make say sure that we make a, no g because yeah. i think we do bear that burden and i think we do that through our art but i don't we don't need to necessarily take it one-on-one -on -one in our personal lives we yeah. can do yeah. i think everyone has to do their piece yes. to to for for progress and for uh social yeah. and uh, re social reparations yeah. i would call it um and and awareness but yeah but having one-on-one -on -one, uh or having like unkind or or, or yeah. whatever interactions like that is not part I, of the yeah, part of the because, responsibility because at the think. end of the day at the end of the day nobody has to tell me twice how much i love my people mm-hmm Rapping in the language I rap in on every stage I go to is because I believe I'm honoring my ancestors by speaking their language. Mm -hmm. That's one. Much as I can express myself in English when it comes to my music and in the way that I can tap into the other dimension, I believe when I'm rapping in Luganda, I'm representing my people to the fullest, mm. to the last great, 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 great grand that ever existed, yeah. to the first speck of dust from the big But band. I want to go back to this. Do you remember what the actual argument was? Because I'm remembering now. No, I want to first finish this thought, then I go okay. back to that. Okay. Um, because th th we make a mistake in, in, our, in our black struggle to think that... Um, We don't need allies. That's one. Well, that connects to it, yeah. Yes. Sometimes the allies have been used to corrupt the movement. But then again, allies have been some of the people who helped. Um, on the under, the, Give an example of the Underground Railroad. Mm -hmm. Without the Quakers, it wouldn't have been. It wouldn't have happened. Right. Without the white, the, uh, a white guy or white woman on a buggy, riding a horse you know like sneaking people under letting people into the house yeah, 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 we, yeah we basically need allies in moving this needle forward and making people see common sense mm -hmm. um it, when when you see a black man with a white woman this is something that which is out of your power and which is out of your control and honestly none of your business <laughs> you get me <laughs> because at the end of the day this is something that god brings together it isn't something that humans bring together. It isn't something that you just wake up in the morning and say, you know what? I'm going to fall in love with a white girl. Well, that's, uh, you see people <laughs> post all the time. Can, yeah. How can I find myself a white, white Where can American? I find myself a white it's girl? Like, like bro, they you don't, don't they look don't, for... They're not, they not dolls sold in stores. You get me? Like, yeah, you, you live your life. In your life, you come across different people. Some yeah. people you really connect with. And yeah, but, but what I'm trying to say, yeah. the, the larger point here, without getting lost in all of this um, dogma, is, is, is that I've seen some of the people who are married or in interracial relationships fight the hardest for their people. Mm -hmm. Like, I know how hard you ride for, for, for us to go to synagogue or Jewish holiday <laughs> or for mm -hmm. me to eat a little bit of of the matzah because it's a <laughs> Jewish holiday. Uh -huh. And even though I don't really like the matzah, I respect it. Mm -hmm. You get me? 
and I love the masa bowl soup, but the masa itself is tasteless to me. <laughs> you get me? But I see how how much it means to you. Mm -hmm. And for me, on the other side, you see how hard I I work to put stories um, or to bring stories to life, African stories, or with the debates and how much time I put into educating young men about our importance to empower ourselves economically and through our stories and to mm -hmm. always represent black people and to know that we have to defend um, our people. You being loyal to the Jewish people and me being loyal to African people um, doesn't make you doesn't I, I don't even so know hard. how to put it. Like it does not take away being from in the, the relationship doesn't doesn't mean you can't be loyal. It yeah, thank you very yeah. much. Doesn't mean that you can't not be loyal to your people mm -hmm. because your people come f come first. And I I I looked up some examples actually. Okay. Nina Simone. Uh huh. One of the most fierce leaders of like the musical the movement, mu yeah, the movement during movement. civil rights, movement. yeah. Like the music she was making is powerful to this day. Yeah. Marry the white man. Mm -hmm. Does it take away from Serena Williams being one of the biggest black sports stars that's inspiring? And role model. Role models inspiring young girls uh, each and every day because she has a white spouse. Mm -hmm. Kofi Annan, UN Secretary General, the very first black Secretary General. Um, Married to a white woman, too. Our creator of Atlanta, what's his name? Donald Glover. Oh, the show. I was like, I hope it uh, oh, Yeah. Ironically, he created the soundtrack to <laughs> Get Out. Um, <laughs> yeah, him too. Him too. Him too. Uh, um, and then well, that's because I, 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 look, I, I, look, I looked at... Um, uh, there's this list I, could go on and yes, on. Yes, yes. I mean, I'm going to let you get okay. back to the story. So, so there's Frederick Douglass. Yes. Who was one of the first writers... Um, of the Negro experience and, abolition uh, movement. and, ab and, and it's yeah. one of the starting seeds of the abolition movement mm -hmm. um, that fought against slavery. Married a white woman and also was a biracial child, but his cause mm. was mainly for his black people. Yeah. Um, I only say that to say and give you examples that I think it's only ignorant because you don't know. Um, and the loyalty to your people will always be there. And it's not the responsibility of interracial couples to take on the burdens of the rest of the world. But for us, we understand and we've been doing that even before we met. We've been rapping for humanity even before, before we met. You know yes, I mean? pro-humanity. Yeah, pro-humanity. So for us, it's, uh, it's about humanity. It's not just yeah, about... Yeah, but when you're talking yeah. about these relationships and yeah. um, their impact or, or the people's ability to be in a movement... <laughs> Um, I'm thinking like the 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 biggest piece of of any progress that happens anywhere is mm -hmm. is a, a greater sense of empathy, right? Yeah, building empathy yes. in society. Uh, that's when change is made. But I think that interracial couples put pe put put each other in this in a space to have greater empathy. Like you, you're. I think so. You have to. So you have to. Yeah, I just I feel like it act, that's probably a reason a lot of people are activists in interracial couples. Because because how can you not be for Black Lives Matter when your son or daughter mm -hmm. is probably going to be black? Yeah, and then that's where it comes into the the allies. So you can yeah. have people that are like mainstream like top list activists, but then there's like the role of the ally is top is list activist? top list. Oh, you can also be a topless <laughs> activist. You can also be a topless activist. Free the activist. nipple. Free the titty. Yes. But um no, I'm saying, but but allies, like you can't have a social movement without allies, uh -huh. uh, because the the very like premise of any kind of social social change or movement is that a marginalized minority group yes. is fighting against a majority oppressor. Definitely. So unless you get some of those majority people, you're never going to get anywhere. Yes. that's just how social movements work. So, like, there has to be interplay between people there has to and be that's why definitely. so i remember that this this argument in nairobi was um we were talking about uh people's voices or or allyship in in the black lives matter movement or in 
we in were the talking black... about that. I thought yeah. we were talking about animals, right? Are you we're talking about what giraffes. You... What? I don't know. Remind me. <laughs> um, I know we we're talking about. There's this. Um, there's this handle. It's. I know it's on Instagram. Oh, it's yes. called No now, White Savior. Now I remember. Now yeah. I remember. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's called No White Savior. I follow it. So many people I know follow it. It has really great information on it. It's it's intense. Like I don't know how they doing that. Keep up with it every day. Like that's like it's really lot. intense. But anyways, yeah. it turns out one of the people that works there is white. I have, and 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 the handle is called No, no White, White Savior. Savior. So the and, question and is, their best, their their whole mission is about how white people come to you third world countries mm -hmm. and take on the savior mentality. Yeah. Um. Sometimes doing doing the most and actually putting lives in danger, mm -hmm. or continuing to perpetuate um a stereotype of Africa being poor, Africa yeah. being helpless, yeah. and painting themselves as the ones who come are in and rescuing yes, and you know yes. like yeah know how things need to be done so yes, then the yes. question is can a a uh i don't know i'm gonna call them an organization can an organization like this have a white woman be part of the leadership isn't that like mm -hmm. isn't that um, ironic is that the word ironic i don't know i think i think the word is ironic. It could like, be, is, no it, is it ironic it or by, uh, is it <laughs> isn't it ironic <laughs> Or, okay. yeah, but um, I don't know her role. Yeah. If she's in one of the top roles, that we does don't seem even problematic. Know. Do we even know? Cause I think I've seen pictures of the, the group of and the I think group. it's the okay. team. Okay. So the question is, is it appropriate for an ally to be part of that? What role is she writing this stuff? Is she coming? Like, again, does she, is she think she's the savior of the group to without n even knowing? I yeah. don't know. So that was, we were sort of talking about that, which I see how that can be problematic. But then we were talking just about the greater dialogue online, in life, everywhere. And this person thought, she said, white people have no voice, no place in this conversation. Like go sit in the fucking corner and keep quiet. And that's where we were like, cause to me, I was thinking, there's a few layers to that. First of all, again, if you don't, if the conversation remains amongst the the minority or the group that's struggling, and it, it doesn't, doesn't get then where does it go? Yes. Yeah, you need to bring people in and, and expand it. The other thing is um, the assumption. Yes, again, I'm white, but, but, I'm, but, but I'm also yeah. Jewish, and yeah. I always, which she wouldn't necessarily know, but I, but she was making an assumption, and for me. I feel that it's valid as a Jewish woman to also have a part of the conversation. Yeah. So, so there's different layers or, and she wouldn't even know, like I could be to Latina. To be part of the I Jewish be, conversation, the black conversation, what, which conversation? All of them. But I think as a, a, as a group that's targeted, yeah. there's also perspective from our group or allyship from our group. That's been important historically. That is important. Yeah. Um, in, so to say that white people just period don't have like that was we we found that kind of no i didn't I, did, I didn't really have a, a a problem because with what she was saying it was like she was saying it to you yeah to the point where it was almost like she was just just about to jump out and scratch out your eyes yeah and um it was kind of like a you, yet, no and, white people shouldn't be even be coming to Africa. Get out of your room. It was kind of yeah, that vibe. It was, it was, right? Yeah, that that was the vibe, <laughs> and I've had that in several circles. Yeah, um, and I, I totally get also where she's coming from because we have had movements, um, black movements in in the past that have been corrupted by people who came in as allies. Yeah. So basically, like Martin Luther's movement. Um, I don't know what they were marching for, but the guys in Harlem, who was Malcolm X's, mm -hmm. well, which was Malcolm X's side of the of the struggle, didn't want these people to go to the White House. So when they went to the White House and marched with the other people, all they got was the news, but they did not get the re the result that all the, mm -hmm. the result that was yeah um that was that was that was needed. So in 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 her in her argument, there's a point, and the point is. Why can't the black people create their own handle, right? Yeah. Manage it by so their, themselves. Yes. Empower it by themselves yes. so that it can be purely and purely their ideas 
fighting yes, for them. I agree with that. Yes, yeah. And I also agree with it too. But except that the way she was making the point was to insult you as if it was you working for Mm -hmm. um, yes, as a representative, for, for, as of, a white representative people, of, of white people or white everywhere. people in and Africa. I, and I white can't people, have that. Yeah. I'm a man. I have to defend my woman. I'm not going to have babies with you. You get me? Like with her. It, it, with her. <laughs> so, so at the end of the day, a man should get out of his house, marry a woman, and make her a queen. So, to me, as as a man, I felt like it was my place to defend my woman. Am I loyal to my people? Yes. You know Do I, I believe in the okay. ideas of your spouse? Yes. But I also just realized yeah. something interesting as we're talking through this more. There's also like, okay, there's being physically part of a social movement, which mm -hmm. I think in this context of the U.S., which again, that's my, I initially go to my experience as an American person. And I think because we live in a mixed society yeah. that you need to have people participating. Do, do white people need to be part of any kind of social movement in Africa? No. Yes. Physically? Social movement? Physically? Physically. On the de ground? It depends. It's, it depends. I don't think they um, need to be there. Like, it, de it depends. Um, I can tell you that... When, although, I, when you think I can of tell you that Mandela, Nelson Mandela, when the apartheid... That's South Africa. Yes. I'm telling you why they should, where they yeah. get physically involved. Yeah. It's because Nelson Mandela, the South Africans, uh, um, the African government, the, the Africans, again, um, was so brutal to black people in South Africa that he was seeking for help from the communists in Russia. That's right. And he actually wanted them to come to the ground yes. and start yes. a war. So there's with that. These people. Then there, well, because there's, again, the South African government was so powerful, they were the major exporters of weapons. Mm -hmm. And they were working with other governments which were allied with capitalists. And his only ally was the Russians. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And I'm so, also thinking about the, the, the the need for boycotts or things like that that create or or different systems of international pressure. I'm all for boycotts. Yes. So th I think then at the end of the day like there's certain like people movements should be f f like fronted by their own people and things like that but I but we live in a global society that has to work in cooperation. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. Yeah. Basically my approach to to Pan-Africanism and my people is to have a global perspective of things. The way that I look at how humanity can succeed is if we, if humanity and people can remind themselves that we all come from one place and that's Africa, the rest becomes bullshit. Mm -hmm. Because if you know where the source is from and you know that whatever affected your skin is because of the journey you took from Africa, you bleed the same. You mm -hmm. die the same. You'd be an idiot not to realize that you are actually the same person. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're no longer fighting a war of what you look like because the, the politicians play the, the race card now yeah. to keep more power and resources to the rich. It, it's no longer about white and black. It's about rich and poor. Because mm -hmm. I can be a rich man in America today. Yeah, but that... I can be a rich man in America today and still benefit from the same policies that benefit the Republicans who don't pay taxes. Right, which is also why we've heard so many things about um, yeah. politicians trying to keep uh, black people or poor black people away from poor white people and yes. keeping the, se yes, the split yes, yes. because, if, God forbid, if they came together yeah, and realized yeah, they have a common, yeah. if, if common poor, struggles. If poor white people and poor black people came together. This was part of the Martin Luther letter. Some, he wrote in jail, I think in an... Alabama jail okay, or whatever. But it's all, yeah, and it's also but he current said that conversation. I'm not your enemy. If if you white people were to join the poor black people, would be fighting for the same thing: mm -hmm. equality, mm -hmm. humanity, human decency. And this is where fair we are. wages. So even like as I'm looking at all these care. arguments and comments, it's it's nonsense to me because at the end of the day, what matters is: are we living decent lives? Are we living behind a planet that can be inhabited? Um, by the young ones and the offsprings, um, the young people, basically. How are we leaving the planet? And what values are we leaving behind? Are we leaving behind a more divided society which is going to cut itself up like Rwanda did? Mm -hmm. Those were black people and mm -hmm. black people divided on tribe. Mm -hmm. um, are we going to have another Bosnia where it was white people on white people, white on white crime, mm -hmm. which gets less and less talked about? Mm -hmm. Or are we really going to boil down to what is really important and that's respecting each other's humanity? 
It's a question, rhetorical question. That's what's really important. The rest is bullshit. I love my white girl. She <laughs> loves this black man. <laughs> now, I mean, and see your name, do I know? Yeah. So, um, so I think that was. Oh, a- also to my other point, like we all celebrated Obama because of the promise he represented, mm-hmm. and because what because of that speech he made where he said, "I'm not thinking about a Latin America." Not a black America, not a white America, but all of America. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons why I love America to me is because America is not just the place. It's not about the place. It's not about the big cars. It's not about the champagne and rap videos. It's not about the apple pie. It's not about the chicken. It's not about the watermelon or the black things. It's not about all of these nice things and nice tuxedos and, you know, the sports. It's It's not about that. It's the idea that a person can totally, totally be free and be so free. Okay. Has America lived up to its idea? Not at all. Not at all. So the here's another thing. The disappointment is that it hasn't lived up to its idea. But here's another thing. So but that... I love the idea and that's what America represents to me. Yeah. A multicultural, multiracial community where everybody is free. Yeah. So that brings me to thinking about like coming to the states we've sp- we spent a few years just like in the states based in the states really focused here yeah. um and that was also when trump came into power i, I just think we're going to talk about interracial relationships we are but i'm trump. talking about like that sort of high, changed the experience or escalated things in terms of dynamics oh, yeah, yeah. Did, and and being on yeah. the ground and and yeah. i think because you're saying you still love the idea but like the reality is really difficult. Yeah, but it's people who change things. If yeah. the people don't accept to be fooled and told that a billionaire is going to bring back call and bring them jobs mm-hmm. and really look at the reality that they're being duped. But I'm just thinking about, okay. Um, okay, okay. I, 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 want, I want to talk about a lighter subject Okay, here. but... Okay, because I was going to go heavier, but... I, I know you are going to go... He- okay, let me... Let, okay, <laughs> deliver the heavy one and then we're going to go to a lighter subject. I'm just remembering... Um, yeah. It was COVID. It was lockdown. We were actually, we went and stayed with COVID my parents. Lockdown. We stayed down with my parents for part of this time, <laughs> which was uh, super wh- intense. Wh- where are you going now? I'm going to, this is when Black Lives Matter movement really uh, uh, took that's off. In, that's intense. That's intense. That's, that really affected me badly. Go on. And I'm just thinking more about like our relationship and... What am I trying to think about? The, the questions, like, I'm trying to think about some of the conversations we have with my parents, trying mm-hmm. to understand. Um, I've lost my train of thought. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Like, now that you're talking, I, I, wonder, I wonder what the point was, but... Um, during that time was one of the heaviest times, I think, in America. And it also represented a time, and I think it was then, about a year and a half ago, where I said that if America were to destroy itself, this is how it's going to destroy itself because it's going to mess up and try to start a race war Mm -hmm. in a place where guns are not regulated Mm -hmm. and the divisions are so strong and nobody is being, nobody's trying Ah. to see the sense in, in looking at the humanity and like, they are too close to the canvas to see the bigger yes, picture. I just remembered. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. so what I was remembering is um, it brought up a lot of conversations with my family, with friends, different people, uh, where they were talking about, okay, how bad really is racism in the U.S.? What are the experiences? And, and then there was often, well, gee, have you experienced that? And just like the assumption that <laughs> since you didn't come complaining to them or talk about it loudly yeah, that you weren't going through or that we weren't w- witnessing as a couple or I wasn't, we like, I'm just thinking of the number of things that were surprising to white people that us living, having spent time in LA, that we, we yeah. all the things we'd experienced in LA and we don't talk about them, but like, yeah, but then, but the, but, but the, you're doing a disservice by not talking about them because then people assume things aren't happening. Yeah. Because they think you're gonna like, actually, like my, actually, like my parents actually, were actually like with your parents. It's more, it's more nuanced conversations because they want to know if you've had personal experiences. They don't doubt that there is racism in America. Yes. But they want to know if the person, a person they know, is 
going through it. Right. During that but, time. But they were surprised because we didn't talk about it with them until yeah, then yeah, yeah. to yeah. say, oh, when we go to a restaurant, people speak to G different than they speak to me. Yeah, um, yeah, if yeah. we're in a department store together, I'll often go over and find someone following you in the store and like yeah, yeah, be I, like, yeah. can I help you? Like I'm literally like <laughs> freak, freak out at them. Even when your sister came to visit us and we were in the store and yeah. someone started following her, I was like, excuse me, like yes, what the, what yes, can yes, I yes, like, yes. That's go Ameri- do your job? That's American racism um, 101. Yeah. So, so it's actually literally everywhere all the time. Yeah. Um, and people often don't think we're together. Yeah. There's that assumption when you're like checking into a hotel or or airplane anywhere they're just like ma'am can i uh, no no oh you're together yes like- yes 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 <laughs> i and and you usually see the look in their face yeah like they they are they're often surprised mm-hmm. um, and then there's the ones who don't like it they yeah, are there friendly are those who don't like it. some people who are friendly and then all of a sudden they're one not friendly one of the friendly. things i can't stand about about american racism is there's I, I don't know. There's that fake smile people give to each mm-hmm. other when they're passing each other like on the street. Yeah. The, this, that, this? G- yeah. I fucking hate that. <laughs> I think I told you, right? Like, don't smile. Don't half smile at me. Don't, don't, don't. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like fake smiling. <laughs> so the, the moment that you've just talked about where we hand in the passports and they're like, oh, you're together. Oh, we're checking in um, at a hotel. They flash the same smile. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know this until I saw a Trevor Noah episode where Roy Jones Jr., who's one of the reporters on the Mm -hmm. show, uh, goes to Boston and they're talking about Boston being one of the most racist cities. I'm like, what? That's that's where I'm from. Yeah, that's where you're from. And I'm like, I haven't experienced any racism in Boston. So this must have been years ago. (laughs) This was years ago. This was years ago. So... um, so to the East Coasters in the North often paint Boston to be uh, very liberal and progressive and, you'd think and educated and, and progressive this and, that. and educated, yeah, but it's super segregated. And then there is the they always paint the South as the loonies mm-hmm. who are racist, gun toting, moonshining, drinking, yeah, yeah. Uh, trumpers. Mm-hmm. And but then you get to discover the more and more you study the American situation, that the subtle racism is actually more dangerous than the overt racism. Because with the overt racism, you know how to defend yourself. Mm. The subtle racism smiles in your face. I'd say it's all de- all deadly to, and... Ter- but like, but you, would rather, you would rather show it to me overtly so I know how to react to you mm. and defend myself then kill me slowly. You get me? Mm. It's, it's the gas chamber or you're taking yeah. me through America as a black man. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the same call. to me. It's a tough call. Yeah. It's, 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 it, even if you don't experience uh, racism directly in the US, it's the feeling alone of watching videos day in, day out mm-hmm. of people like you being hunted and killed like animals yeah knowing that they are being hunted and killed as animals because they are trapped in a system that does not give them jobs no way out you're incriminated you don't even have a vote like it's that's the subtle racism that the tad that they try to polish over Mm. that's what's deadly it's done in the name of law enforcement they create codes yeah. like calling people I, thugs. Yeah. You'd rather call me the N-word from the other side of the street so we see if we're going to fight about it or mm-hmm. I see a way to defend myself. And I know we're definitely going to do an episode that's purely yeah. about your experience uh, I'm a as an African... I'm a black man Yeah, color. as a black yeah. man, as an African man in the States. Uh, so mm. we can definitely talk about more of that. These in, are very heavy depth. topics. Definitely yeah. cannot be dissected within just... Uh, just a few hours, but I promise my listeners or our listeners that we were going to talk about something lighter. Okay, great. <laughs> so, I think one of the lightest moments for me, or oh, which brought clarity and hope to me, was we were on this very affluent island, one of the richest islands in America. Mm. It's where rich people go to. 
to relax. Ha- to relax and have summer homes and, you know. And I was thinking about um, our future and whether it was going to be a hard situation uh, with members of your family. that Because there were many that loved me, but there was some who were dealing, having difficulty dealing mm-hmm. with with, with your difference, together. dealing with differences. With dif- <laughs> dealing with differences. And even for my side of the family, I also had aunties who had a problem. Yeah, like, yeah. you're the only boy, the last of your father's line. How are you going to mm-hmm. marry somebody and, and the person is going to be mixed? Da, da, yeah. da, da, and and that, all that other nonsense. Yeah. So I was hearing this. Um, I, w- I was going through that. Um, usually I keep it at the back of my mind. That shit does not bother me. It doesn't like... Yeah, same. It doesn't bother me. I just look at it as ignorance that needs to be educated away or fears that need to be dealt with mm-hmm. or they, they'll come around. They'll yes, give them yes. chances to learn while I also educate myself in how to have better conversations or um, live... But either way, I'm going to live my life to the fullest. I'm going to enjoy my love life to the fullest the way it's intended to be so we're still in this tense theater on the island and we were watching a movie by an indian actor called kumar i don't even remember it it about, oh, it was the about an indian man uh, who the had white a black sick. wife or was she white i don't remember but they had this. an interracial <laughs> they had an, an interracial thing going on mm-hmm. and they were having the sweetest taboo mm-hmm. and um and there's a scene in this movie. I think was it called the Big Sick? Yes, I could be yes, wrong. Yes, the Big is it, Sick. Is yeah. it the Big yes. Sick. God, so good. It. So um, um, we are watching this movie in this very affluent place, and um, in this movie there is a scene where this guy is having a conversation. I think with one of the parents of of the family, or was it an uncle, or somebody who didn't like him in the beginning? Mm-hmm. And they was it? A, I don't know. I, I can't. St- I can't remember how the scene was set. I don't know if it was in a therapist place or it was a restaurant or it was a living room. Okay. But but the dialogue went like, and he was asked a question that, and how did you get there? Because now it's like this ending, the happy ending, and they all have clarity that it's the big happy family. And mm-hmm. he asked him, how did so? How did you get there? And the other person said, a lot of awkward awkward conversations. Yeah. A lot of awkward, awkward it conversations. It is. It is a yeah. lot of o- awkward conversations. Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of awkward conversations that nevertheless need, need to be had. You get me? Yeah. We need to have those conversations. So um, I don't know if there's something that you want to add, but uh, I want to know what our listeners um, are thinking about uh, in the comments. Um, this is a very interesting topic. We set out to just talk about interracial relationships, the colors that we like. <laughs> yeah, you know, like whether you like coffee and tea, whether it's... But we ended up talking about um, like some of the most heavier realities that are cast upon an interracial couple and they have to deal with and answer these questions. And you have the responsibility to educate uh, your community about their misconceptions, their fears, their stereotypes, which are wrong. You have the responsibility to educate the Jewish people. I have the responsibility to educate... Uh, my Ugandan people, mm-hmm. uh, my African people, and some of my movement people about their misconceptions. We all celebrated Obama. Obama is a mixed kid. Maybe what could come out of this is the next uh, president of Mars. Or Drake. We, since, you know. Or Drake. Yeah. <laughs> or Sean Paul. We'll, t- we'll, take, or we'll, take, Keys, we'll, we'll take any of these. Oh, Mariah any of the Carey. No, I mean, oh, El- Eleni yeah. Kravis. But. Uh, Hamilton, do you like a race car driver? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, something like uh-huh. that. We could do, uh-huh. we could I'll do it either I'll take a race car driver. Way. Um, all I wanted to, to say is that beauty always comes out of so many colors mixing. I think paintings are more beautiful with more colors on the canvas. Yeah, and, and I also think it's important that the people who have issues with interracial relationships, um, it either comes out of a place of hate, ignorance, or pain. I'll take ignorance. I'll take ignorance. What do you mean? I'm not saying take... I, I'm just saying that... Th- Either What's taking it? No, no, no. I think more often is is ignorance. Mostly ignorance. Yeah, mostly I would say it is mostly and ignorance. And then the ignorance breeds fear and stereotypes. Yeah. But the I think the point I'm trying is is that 
none of those are going to be changed without conversations. None. So, yeah. And I think being in this relationship sets up more conversations. Doing the art we do creates conversations. So this I, podcast sets this up podcast. conversations. Now yeah, I that's mean, what. No, I think that's what we're trying to do. Oh yeah, yes, definitely. <laughs> uh, this is what we're trying to do. Um, I I, I really loved uh, sharing some of them. I think I don't think we've shared some of the conversations we've shared uh, during this podcast, like ever, even with each other. Right. Like there's some, some there were, yeah, yeah, yeah. There were some things come up. Yeah, and I, I know we wanted to talk about the Hollywood scene where there we've had issues as well, but I feel like you know we've yeah, yeah, yeah. in Black Hollywood, but but it's the same. We, I think we covered that because in Black it's Hollywood, the same in, issue. In, in, yes, it's the same issue because whichever successful uh, every black actor who becomes successful goes for the white girl. Not every, but, married, there, but there's most, a tendency, and then it, it, it people a tendency, yeah. feel a way about it. Um, and and but that's, but, and that's most of the, but gee, you're talking about like Hollywood. I'm talking about with within our when we move yeah, around yeah, Hollywood but, and go but, to but, parties but, but and it's events. It's the same thing. Before you become a bigger star, you're chilling in the circles. We're chilling. Yeah, it's the same thing. The people, the people at the party. But w- do you think w- those the people at the party you're talking about? are basically writing for the, some of the biggest stars and managing the biggest stars. I know, but are they Hollywood. having a feeling some way because it's. Hollywood, or I'm talking about um, there being a large movement everywhere, but also uh, definitely in Hollywood of like of strong, powerful, educated, amazing black people and black creatives. Yeah. yeah. And are you feeling like there's a reaction because they feel like black creatives are marrying white people, or do you think it just comes from just purely? black people were marrying white people so there, there are two things there are two things here again the, the beauty is that this is a podcast and we don't have a limit on time but there are two things to unpack here um and the first one is that a white woman is a forbidden fruit to a black man so you were killed. Emmett Till was killed for whistling at a white woman. Right. That liar. Right. That fucking liar. Um. So, since slavery, the white, the white, the white woman has been looked at as this prize of I'm going to. And the black man has been framed as like this, like monster perpetrator. Scary yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The, the stereo- but like but, the but even in that, yeah. even in that, creating that stereotype, they are afraid that the black man. Come on, look at a black man. A black man is basically a statue of a god. Yeah. You get me? Like Pretty you, much. You look at those muscles, I'm, the strength. I don't know if all are, but not this all one are, is. But yeah, it's, not, not even me. I, I, I would put myself out of that category. I'm growing <laughs> old. I'm losing my touch. But I'm talking about like you look at the strength, the agility, the fun, the cool and everything. And I understand if some white men feel threatened and yeah. they feel the need to create the stereotypes <laughs> yes. that the white man is a savage. Look at his lips. Those are yeah. beautiful black lips. Yeah. yeah. I mean, those are, that, that's some broad muscle. Mm-hmm. And that's the black that don't crack. Mm-hmm. Now, I mean, so, so they, they created the stereotypes to protect their young women. Again, racial purity. Yes. The girls are preferring the black men. We don't want them to bang these mm-hmm. these strong so slaves in the field. Reasons, Let's yeah. create the rules to separate those two. Let's create art which is going to demean the black man and the black family. Let's let's create let's begin hanging them for even looking their way. Mm-hmm. Let's separate the rules. Let's make them not read. They did all of these things to make sure that the white people the white girls did not fall for the black men. You get me? Mm-hmm. Insecurity, fear, a lot of ignorance. Yes. So that's one. So when some people look at a black man with a white woman, there are two angles of looking at it. To a black man who has been hustling to get into a position of power, um, why don't you give your throne to another black queen? To a black queen. queen. Yeah. Why don't you empower another black queen who is the most underlooked uh most underlooked and most degraded yeah in society woman in society in today. american society like yeah. why do you take that high throne and give it to a white woman who has not struggled even a, an inch or a quarter with what this woman has Correct. had to put up through with your shit yes 
like through all of that pain she has been there for you yes so you take all of this success and you've drained her of all her energy and instead of rewarding her with the, with the crown you give the throne to a white girl yes so that's how most black women look at it mm-hmm. like f you yeah f you whatever mm-hmm. and, and whatever comes with that yeah so that's one way of looking at it and black women are bitter that way because even when they are casting for oh, that, that's one way of looking at it the other way of looking at it is this black man is mentally enslaved yeah <laughs> He's mentally, oh, he, and he thinks it's he's like mentally enslaved to think that a white woman, because he has always been shown this picture of a white woman in the movies, shown this picture of a white like woman, like it's in, an achievement. It's an a... achievement. Even King Kong, who looks like this very big thing, wanted this white woman who is fragile. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, it's yeah. looked at it looked at as a mental chain mm. on black men that look at this stupid black man mm-hmm. thinking that that's the price because Hollywood has sold him the picture yeah. that this is the price for you to be successful buy a Ferrari um, do, do all these things you want to buy big house, yes. big whatever and also have a white woman mm-hmm. that's another way of looking at it yeah. um, there was a third one which I'm forgetting is which third? is really, yes there's okay. a third there's a third which I'm really forgetting but it's very very important uh, Yeah, uh, here, here it is it's about representation. Representation in Hollywood of representation in Hollywood basically of black people is fucked up. Yeah. So if black men are not being portrayed as thugs, the the white the black woman is the help. Mm-hmm. She just they are making dishes, cleaning the plates, taking care of the kids. Yeah. Either that she's the help. Or she is the very angry black woman. Yeah. Uh, the ghetto chick that has no manners. Yes. That's the representation. Yeah, it's always so, stereotypes. So, yes, it's always a stereotype. So there's a need for people to create characters and have examples, many examples of successful black families. Yes. Because there's no representation uh, of that in Hollywood. And Hollywood perception rules everything. So when you see a Will Smith and a Jada, you're like, yes. You see an Obama with um, Michelle, Michelle mm-hmm. you're like, oh, yes. You see um, Steph Curry and his, and his wearing, you're like, oh, yes. So people feel that it needs yeah. to be in real life within the industry to be replicated more easily. More easily. And represented and, more and easily. And to be, to be a strong family, not, in, not only in, in the representation of, of, of the films and whatever, but also like in real life, let the younger generation see success, real success and successful people mm-hmm. and that their people are also deserving of that bond because yeah. there's um in the white racist destruction of the black family the black men are imprisoned at a higher rate yes. than any other race of a man yeah. and taken to jail because they deny the women the power of the men to look over their offspring mm-hmm. and when you look at that and that's the norm in most ghettos in america in most neighborhoods is the norm actually the whole state in every state, the black man is the most incarcerated. Yes, yes, yes. So when you look at um, the few that make it, they are often taken away from them because there is no representation of a, a black family yeah. in the picture. So when when we come through in <laughs> in in a black Hollywood party. Definitely, we are there to kick it with our friends. People are going to be drinking wine, mm-hmm. cooking some of the dope food. Yeah. And there are people who honestly don't care. They just most don't have people a, don't most care. people don't care. They're just out there to have a good time. But, but many times, but many I'll times, go to the bathroom, I'll go to get something. I come back, she was having a great conversation. Yeah. They realize we're together. And. <laughs> Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like basically, total flip. we are having a conversation about people, about Africa, <laughs> da, 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 da. and then the people come through and they're like looking at this white girl next to us, and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is, yeah, that's my wife. And the, the <laughs> look on their face just just changes. Yeah, conversation it, 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 it over. It almost like destroys the promise of what they what what they expected. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so so we have seen that, but again, 
that's the minority i totally understand and it's the yeah, minority and I also understand, yeah i, I, I totally, understand. totally understand as well and i was just saying so you just explained uh, or described three different ways of looking at it mm-hmm. and i think they're all completely valid based yeah. on uh, lived experiences and history and and current uh current realities of of how things are yeah. in society and on tv mm-hmm. and then the thing is the thing that challenges that is um feelings like someone just feel, oh, yeah. falls for who, feelings. Like, so the feelings so, matter yeah the feelings matter so, if feelings do then so yeah i mean yeah. at the end of the day you can have beliefs yeah and maybe you can control your heart or maybe that controls you who know, you fall in love with. Do you know, do you know what it, Hollywood did as the answer to Love Jones? There's a very beautiful black film called Love Jones. I love it. Mm. It's like Lawrence Tate. Classic. Who is, who is the pasta in power? Because you're watching yeah. Power now. I just who's finished it. I'm power? so sad. Now, now watch him when he's younger and he has like, um, what's her name? Nia Long. Mm. And he's a, the story is amazing. So when Hollywood saw that, what movie did they make? Um, Julia Steele's Styles, I can't pronounce her name. Which one? It's a dope movie. I loved it as a kid. Um, the one in the high school. Yes. With Heath Ledger. Where there were dancers. Heath Ledger. There were dancers. Oh, oh, oh no. Uh, save the last. Save dance. the last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Save the last dance. Again, the idea of this black love, black white. Oh, dynamic. I just added another song for the interracial playlist. Yeah. I see your true colors. Because <laughs> that was like one of the big songs. On yeah, man. Yeah. Um, How about One Love? One Bob Marley. Love, yeah, yeah, yeah. Love, that's, that's a vibe. That's a vibe right there. Let's get together. Yeah. yeah. And feel all right. And feel all let's right. Let's feel all right, my people. <laughs> yeah. Do yeah. you have any questions? <laughs> I have a lot is, of is, questions. Is it, is it I'm co- just living it, this is, life and going is it, is through it. it. Coffee and, do you like coffee and cream? I do. Me too. Me too. And I like coffee mm-hmm. and I like cream. And I like coffee oh. and cream. Oh, it's... So Me too. Do you like Oreo and cookies? Oreos? Oreo cookies? Well, you know, do you know I the don't. joke about Oreo cookies though. Or because you don't like chocolate, which yeah. is ironic. I know. I always practice. Well, yeah, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's to the extent that it's not funny anymore. But I like it. So, so she doesn't eat chocolate, and <laughs> black people are chocolate. So, she goes like, "Ah, oh, I don't eat chocolate." And I'm like, "Isn't it ironic?" Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Um, you don't like Oreo cookies because you don't like chocolate. Mm-hmm. Cool. <laughs> There's a joke in there. There's a joke sparked in the middle. So it's your boy GNL Zamba and Miriam Taman. Together we are. Together we're in Simbi. Let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, we've had a very beautiful discussion. Yeah, Hope this discussion. Too. This discussion will be ongoing. Yeah. And I, 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 I feel we, like it felt so negative as you're saying. I don't want it but, to be negative. Yeah, because I feel like all the outside stuff and the projections or the issues other people have might yeah. be negative. It's, it's not what but we think. Within our own experience and our yeah. relationship. We love it, it's and and it's mostly not a, like our day to day is not negatively impacted there, by there people. There are people who are pissed um, that I'm always with my my wife in my pictures, <laughs> like and this shit is funny to me. Like get yours, you yeah, I mean? like, yeah. <laughs> like get yours. Jay Z is always with Beyonce. No, I mean get yours, get yours, yeah. Man. Peace and love. Everyone, and you live your time. life. Do it how you want to do it on your terms. It's your life. Yes, and feelings matter. People have been trying to break this up for the last 10 years. <laughs> it's not going to happen. This is Solomon, Queen of Sheba. And see you after yeah. the Signing out. Life. See you on the next one. <laughs>